So picture this. You're settling into your seat on Air India Express flight IX2564. There are, what, 160 passengers heading from Delhi to Jammu. Everything feels completely routine, you know. Then, suddenly, mid-flight, the aircraft makes a sharp turn. It's heading back, back to Delhi. And there's no obvious reason, right? No engine issue announced, no emergency call, nothing visible. The reason. It's almost invisible itself, suspected GPS signal spoofing. Someone or something was messing with its navigation signals. Faced with this uh, digital ghost, the pilot made that crucial call, returned to IGA airport in Delhi. So today we're doing a deep dive. We want to unpack what GPS spoofing actually is, why it's becoming this, well, this growing threat, especially in certain sensitive airspaces, and crucially how the safety protocols, the training, all kicked in to make sure everyone landed safe and sound. This is where it gets really fascinating, I think. It really is. What's kind of wild is how something you can't even see, just these digital signals, can have such a direct physical impact on, you know, massive airplanes. GPS spoofing isn't like just losing the signal, which can happen. No, this is deliberate. It's malicious. Someone's broadcasting fake satellite signals to trick a system like the aircraft's navigation system into thinking it's somewhere it isn't. And in aviation, I mean, knowing your exact position, that's everything. For landing safely, for staying on the right flight path, it's absolutely non-negotiable. So any interference like this, well, it carries some incredibly serious safety risks. And the location here is key too, isn't it? This happened near Jammu, that's right up against the border with Pakistan. So it immediately ramps up the security concerns for India's airspace, especially when you hear experts linking this kind of spoofing to, well, geopolitical hotspots. That's exactly right. Captain Mohan Raghunathan, he's a well-respected aviation safety analyst. He's pointed out that for about two years now, there have been pretty consistent reports. We're seeing this GPS spoofing in areas like Pakistan, Iran, parts of the Middle East, even Myanmar. It almost always seems to pop up in or near conflict zones. Now, he's careful to say, look, it's definitely deliberate, but we can't always pin down exactly who is doing it. It's tricky. But seeing it happen near international borders like this, it just highlights how vulnerable commercial flights can be in these um, sensitive regions. Pilots are trained for this, of course. They know to be extremely cautious because getting coordinates wrong, especially near potentially hostile territory, could be, well, incredibly dangerous. OK, so the pilot decides to turn back. How much of that is pure pilot judgment in the moment versus, you know, just following the standard procedures? What are those protocols designed for in a situation like this, especially, as you said, flying so close to the line of control with Pakistan? That's a tense area. Well, it's absolute standard procedure. It's textbook aviation safety, really. When pilots hit GPS signal problems loss, anomalies, anything weird, the first thing they do is switch to alternative instruments. And these aren't just simple backups. We're talking sophisticated systems like inertial navigation systems, the INS. These track the plane's position using internal gyros and accelerometers, completely independent of GPS. Right, they don't need outside signals. Precisely. They also radio air traffic control for guidance. But if that signal problem, that discrepancy, just doesn't clear up, like it seems happened here, then turning back to where you started is always, always considered the safest bet. Yes, it meant a big delay for those 160 passengers, nearly six hours stuck on the ground. That's a major inconvenience, no doubt. Yeah. But, you know, you weigh that against the potential risks that were avoided. There's no comparison. It really shows how sometimes the best safety measures are the ones that feel inconvenient at the time, but prevent something truly catastrophic. That's a really important point. So this whole incident, it really highlights the layers of safety built into air travel. You've got the pilot's judgment, the technology, the robust protocols all working together against these, well, invisible digital threats. For a threat like this to be managed so effectively, what does that signal about how resilient modern aviation actually is? And looking beyond just this one flight, what are the bigger implications here for how pilots navigate in the future, maybe, and for international cooperation against these kinds of threats? Yeah, definitely underscores that ongoing need for um, vigilance and adaptation. Air travel security has to keep evolving. This incident has already sparked talks among aviation authorities. They might review the rules, the protocols for flights near these sensitive zones. Experts are suggesting things like, well, enhanced electronic countermeasures. Like what, specifically? Could be wider use of those inertial navigation systems, maybe as primary navigation in certain areas, or integrating receivers that can use multiple satellite systems, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou. If you can cross-reference signals from different constellations, it makes it much harder for a single spoofing attack on one system to actually work. 
And there's definitely a call for more international cooperation, you know, sharing information and monitoring these spoofing threats globally. It really makes you think, doesn't it? What does this mean for the future of just secure navigation in general? And how do nations work together in this connected world? How do we protect something as basic as knowing where we are from these invisible, deliberate attacks, especially as the tech to do it gets, well, easier to access? Definitely something to mull over as we all navigate our increasingly digital world.